Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There has been some progress in unlocking the reform, allowing embedded generation plants below 100 megawatts to proceed. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the relevance. Hi Terence. NUSA has registered the first two 100 megawatt projects in the Northwest. Yes, this is a bit of a breakthrough. We know the reform's been knocking around for some time and we know that there's been complaints about red tape and onerous conditions particularly around the NERSA registration process, but also around getting grid connection uh, agreement from or, or contracts from ESCOM, which is required if you're going to wheel or use the network, and getting through your environmental impact assessment processes. So there's, there's been some delay in getting some of these things through. So it was with great excitement, I think, that we saw the first two 100-megawatt uh, projects coming through both in the Northwest Province, both being developed by Soda Group, which is part of the, um, which has got an equity shareholder, African Rainbow Energy. So uh, this group is now going to take these projects through to financial closure at the end of July, hopefully. And then they're talking about a 14 month uh, construction period and they're gonna be wheeling this power. The client is really Tronox um, uh, Mineral Sands, which is a big uh, titanium producer, New York Stock Exchange Company, and they have plants in both KwaZulu-Natal and in, on the west coast of South Africa, and they produce a number of uh, titanium pr products. So it's a, a big development for uh, South Africa, and it shows that finally this reform is starting to have some impact. The regulator has also indicated that it will be easing some of the registration requirements. Yes, uh, I think this is an important uh, announcement. You know that Operation Vullendlele has been looking, as I mentioned, at all these constraints to why this uh, registration wasn't happening. The reform allows 100 megawatt pl plants or anything below that to proceed without a license, but just to be registered uh, with, with NERSA. So it's a less of a, uh, a sort of intensive process theoretically but it's been difficult for those uh, developers. We know there's about 4,500 megawatts of these projects knocking around. Every mining company just about has a project in the pipeline. Many in energy intensive businesses have projects in the pipeline. And uh, the registration has been a bit of a sticking point. So the fact that they say they're no longer going to need a power purchase agreement is an important uh, signal that they really want to facilitate this registration, not make it overly onerous, because there was a, a fear that registration was just becoming a quasi-licensing process and things were going to be delayed, and that did seem to be part of the problem. So now I think attention can shift to the other impediments to these projects proceeding, and those are really around water use licenses, environmental in impact assessments, getting the grid, co uh, grid connection contracts with ESCOM in place, and you know, Eskom's put in good capacity now at its grid access unit. Uh, that has been a constraint not only for these, these projects, but also for projects being procured through the centralised programme, through the IPP office. So that's important that Eskom gets its act in uh, house in order, which it seems to be doing. And now the next step, I think, would be to declare these 100 megawatt projects, SIP or Strategic Integrated pro Programmes or projects, which under that uh, pro process you can accelerate these issues around land, uh, land use, water use, environmental impact assessments. So I think we're going to see an announcement there soon. So it seems that all these sticking points are slowly being worked through the system. There has been an intensive process uh, sort of facilitated by Operation Vullendlele, which is the presidency and the treasury, to try and un unlock sp project specific uh, impediments and we saw Solar Group mentioning that uh, the presidency had played a role in unlocking their two northwest uh, projects, and uh, then to look at these systemic issues that are still constraining the 100 megawatt reform from really moving ahead, which is really the quickest and cheapest way to get new capacity, which is much needed onto the system, uh, to sort of alleviate this, uh, this uh, load shedding crisis. ESCOM and some municipalities are also looking to take advantage of recent market reforms. Yes, so ESCOM has also tied itself uh, to this 100 megawatt reform and that they're now making uh, land available next to Tatuka and Majuba power stations. So this is grid-ready land, so land that has got access 
that you can actually uh, evacuate power into the grid because uh, a lot of these miners, they, for instance, like this, these first projects, the Tronox facilities are in KwaZulu-Natal and in, in, in the Makwaland. You know, they're not in uh, Northwest Province, but they're going to use the network to wheel the electricity. So again, Eskim saying, well, we've got this land that's next to these power stations. Come and look at it. We can lease it to you over more than 20 years, and you can uh, use this land uh, that is grid ready to start uh, building your projects. And there have been something like 21 bidders for that uh, opportunity for that lease. And we should hear in the next couple of months the first, the names of those successful bidders. And it will be f to facilitate again this unlocking of this 100, sub 100 megawatt reform. And then municipalities, which have also been given the right now through changes to the regulations to proceed and procure and build their own projects, uh, municipalities so-called in, in good standing. And we can see now, obviously, the, the big one uh, that most advanced it seems to be Cape Town with their 300 megawatt uh, tender already in the market and has already closed. Kuruleni is doing quite a lot of work um, and so is Trane. And then the big an announcements this week out of the city of Johannesburg, which is the economic hub. I think it adds gravitas to this whole municipal procurement program. And they're going to take a few months to get their tender documents ready. They're going to go on a fact-finding tour of uh, Cape Town to see how they've done it. And then we should see their request for proposals coming out. And they say they need to invest 26 billion rand in electricity uh, infrastructure and in generation capacity. And obviously they can't do it and they're wanting to contract with IPPs. So we can see slowly, slowly, things are starting to take shape around this 100 megawatt reform. And the presidency uh, is now saying that they think the floodgates are going to start opening. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.